Hi, I'm Anson Hidajat for Qdabra Software, here to show you how to create cascading dropdowns in InfoPath. The form I'm creating for this demo is a car registration form. This form will allow me to pick the make, model, and color of my car. The data I'll be using to populate my dropdowns are in three SharePoint lists. The first is makes, and this is simply a list of all the car manufacturers I have here. The second one is models, and you'll see each model is associated with a make. And finally in colors is similar to the models list in that each color is associated with a model. So here's my InfoPath form. I'll first preview the form to demonstrate the behavior that I want to create. So I'll go ahead and create, uh, add a make and you'll see that the model dropdown is going to change based on the value I selected in make. So I don't have the color dropdown implemented yet so let's go and do that. So back in the designer, I'm going to go and uh, go into the properties of the color dropdown. And for choices, I want to grab them from an external data source. And I've already added a colors data connection, so I'll select that. So here you'll see this. Uh, all this data is going to be pre-populated by InfoPath. Now, if I want to go and add a filter, I need to go and click this select XPath button, click filter data. Now let's add a filter. And here I specify my filter conditions. And this left drop down here, I'm going to select model. And I want that to equal the model that I selected in my form. So we'll go in, into the main data source. And we're going to go and select model here. So we'll OK out of all of these dialogs. And let's go and preview the form to see if it worked. So we'll select my make, select the model. And great, the color is populated and the color will change based on the model that I selected. And that's how you create cascading dropdowns in InfoPath. Now, I can go and add a little bit more polish to my form. If I go and I select a color, and if I decide now I want to change the model, notice that the color stays the same. But this could lead me into an invalid state where a color will be selected uh, that doesn't match up with the model. So actually the behavior that I want would be if I change the value of model, I want to clear out the color. And we can do that through rules very easily in InfoPath. So back in the designer, I'm going to go and add a rule for my model dropdown. So let's add a new rule here. And for an action, we want to set a field value. And we want to set the color field to nothing. Great. So now let's go and preview the form. Go ahead and select my values. And then if I go and change my model, my color will get cleared out. And I could do the same thing with make as well, as you can see I already did. The last thing I'll show you here is uh, this specify new color that I have in the bottom of my form. So suppose in this drop down here, I don't actually have the color of the car that's selected. Uh, what I can do is I can add a new color. Now I achieve this functionality using Qdabra's Q rules. And uh, there's a submit to SharePoint list command that I used. Uh, what it'll do is actually take the color that I specify here and take the model that I selected and it'll actually write a new entry into the colors uh, SharePoint list that I have. So let's go and add a color. Great, uh, yellow was added. And if I go and check my color dropdown, you'll notice that yellow is now added as a new value in this dropdown. And just to double check, we're going to go back to my colors list. And if I go and refresh this, at the very bottom, you'll be able to see there's color for this, uh, this new color. The yellow color is going to be added. And this was done using Qdabra Q rules. For more information about Q rules, visit our website at www.qdabra.com. Thanks for watching.